the Halloween night of 1976 left me traumatized. I was 12 years old, and the sky was going dark. The sun going down meant one and only one thing. Time to trick or treat. I threw on my costume and told my dad I was leaving. I was going out by myself because at 12 years old, I felt like I was old enough to do that kind of thing. But that was a huge mistake. Back in the 70s, parents didn't see a problem with young kids going out at night alone, especially on Halloween. So I left the house alone and confident. I was almost running from house to house, getting my pumpkin-shaped candy basket filled up so quickly. Things were fine until I arrived at this one house. It wasn't decorated at all, but that didn't stop me. I walk up the driveway to the house. I knock on the door. No one answers, but I can see the lights are on, so I knock again. I knock probably four times until finally a man in his 40s opens up. He is fat and he is bald on the top of his head, except for a greasy comb over. He looks mad as he answers the door, but it seemed like once he saw me, his attitude changed and he was very friendly. He was giving me compliments on my ninja costume. I said thank you, and then he kind of stared at me, looking me up and down. I felt kind of weirded out. I said, do you have any candy? He said, oh, oh, yes, yes, sorry. I forgot to put it out. Hold on one second. He looked around left to right for a moment, and then he said, are you by yourself? I said, yes. He said, where are your parents? I said, they're at home. It was at this point that his friendly attitude faded. He stepped out onto his front porch and looked side to side. He walked back into his house, looked straight into my eyes, and then violently grabbed me. I dropped my basket and tried to fight him off. He was pulling at me, trying to pull me into his house. I screamed, help, help. A man across the street who was with his son saw what was happening. He ran over and pulled me from the guy's hands. This man started punching the creep. The guy who tried to take me was now laying on his ground and bloody. His lip was busted open. This dad asked if I was okay and took me home. He told my dad what happened and my dad called the cops. The creep was arrested and we later found out that he was a criminal child molester. Thank God for that random guy being in the right place at the right time. This is a story that happened to me and a group of my friends back in high school. I haven't wanted to share it because it was very traumatic for me. But here it goes. I was one of the popular girls. I wasn't a cheerleader or anything, but I was well known among the school. And I'll admit that the group of friends I had and I weren't very nice to people we thought weren't as cool as us. Especially this girl who I will just call Ashley. Ashley was a girl who I knew since 7th grade. She was always kind of weird to me. Didn't have many friends. As the years went on from 7th grade to our junior year, I grew in popularity and she kind of stayed in the shadows. My friends and I used to torment this girl, making fun of her black clothes and her pale skin and the way she didn't know how to correctly apply her eye makeup. We were so mean to her. Almost daily we would put her in tears. I remember Halloween weekend was upon us, and the Friday before we got out of school, we were making fun of her because she wore her costume to school. She was a bumblebee, and again, we put her in tears. But while my friends were all laughing, I remember hearing her say something in her shooken voice. She said, Halloween, and then walked away in a hurry. Then, that next day, Saturday, was Halloween. I remember I was a playboy bunny. I had my friend Becca with me, and we left around 5 to meet up at our friend David's house to go trick-or-treating with a few friends. The sun went down, and our group left David's house and started hitting up houses. After being out for an hour or so, we noticed that behind us was someone wearing a bumblebee costume, but a scary devil mask too. They weren't going house to house, 
They were just following us. I remember David shouted out to the person, What the fuck do you want? The person removed the mask. It was Ashley. She had this intense look of hatred on her face. David laughed once he realized it was her. He yelled again, Go home, freak. You think you're gonna hang with us? We all started laughing, but Ashley didn't move. Just kept staring. David tried stepping up again, probably to try to impress us, and he started walking at Ashley. I could hear him yell out at her as he walked saying, Go home, bitch. Right after he said that, Ashley pulled out a large pair of scissors and lunged at David. David tried to run, but Ashley drove the scissors into his back. She pulled them out and stabbed him again. She was screaming like an animal. The other guys in our group ran up and pulled Ashley off of him. We called the cops and David was escorted to the hospital. He ended up being okay and Ashley got arrested. But seeing Ashley attack him like that on Halloween was terrifying. She must have been planning that attack for a while. Last night, October 30th, I went to a Halloween party at my buddy's house. The day started off with me going to work. It was only a six hour shift because my boss let us go home early. I went home and started getting ready for this party. I'm 28, so I didn't really feel like dressing up much. I really only cared about getting there to start drinking. So I just wore my regular clothes with a Freddy Krueger mask. I get to the party at around 9. Loud dance music is playing. People are taking shots. Weed is being smoked in the backyard. Girls are puking out front. It looks like a pretty good time so far. So I start drinking and dancing with some girls. A few friends of mine were there, and I met a few new cool people. So needless to say, we were taking pictures on our phones all night. A few hours goes by, and the party is slowing down. So I call for an Uber and get a ride home. Then I wake up the next morning, and this is where the story shifts. I'm laying in bed, hungover, barely any memory of the night. I reach over to my nightstand and grab a water bottle to drink. I'm laying in bed with my eyes shut when my phone buzzes. I grab it, and it's my friend Tom texting me saying how much fun he had last night. I laugh to myself a little and then remember that I have a whole new gang of pictures in my phone to look at. I open up my pictures and start sliding through them. Looks like I had a good time. But then I notice in one of the pictures that I'm in, there's a dark figure standing behind me. I swipe to the next picture, and that figure is behind me in that one too. I start going through every picture and realize that this dark figure is standing behind me in every one. I send a few pics to my friend and ask him who that guy is behind me. My friend texts back and says he never saw anyone at that party like that. This freaked me out. I jump out of bed and sit at my computer desk. I plug in my phone and upload my pictures. Once they've uploaded, I zoom in on the figure. Its face is too blurry to make out, but I'm starting to get really scared by it. As I zoomed in on the face, I hear footsteps approaching behind me. I live alone, so who could be behind me? I turn around in my chair really fast, but no one is there. I'm thinking my mind is playing tricks on me. So I turn back around. When I do that, the footsteps start again. I flip around once more to again see no one. My heart starts beating fast, and then I get a horrible idea. I grab my phone, unlock the screen, I press the camera app, I turn it to selfie mode and hold it up in front of my face. I put my thumb over the camera button and click it. I go to look at the picture, and when I do, I drop my phone and the screen shatters. I pick up my phone, and there it is. The figure was standing right behind me. Halloween used to be my favorite holiday. That statement does not hold true today. 
I took my two boys out trick-or-treating a year ago. It was a very exciting day. My boys just turned old enough to really get excited to walk house to house. So we were really excited to go out that night. My son was the Red Power Ranger and my youngest boy was Darth Vader. They looked adorable. We got ready for the night and then stood by the door for pictures. When picture time was done, the boys grabbed their pillowcases and we marched out of the house. The experience was great. The kids were loving it. We spent a good hour going door to door and then we called it quits. The children's feet hurt, but they were so excited to dump out their candy that they didn't care about the pain. We get home and the boys rip off their masks and jump to their knees on the floor. They each dump out their sacks of candy. They're having a blast eating all of these sugary treats. I'm in my room taking off my face makeup when my oldest says, Mom, what is it, honey? My son comes running into my room. He says, what is this? I look into his small hand to see what he is holding. My eyes focus on it and then I gasp as my stomach turns sour. My son was holding something from his candy that wasn't candy. It was a bloody human ear. My wife and I are the kinds of parents who want to take our kids to do a ton of fun things. My wife is great about finding the events that we do. She approaches me with the idea of taking the kids on a haunted train ride. Sounds good to me. We pay for our tickets online and go the following day to the train station. When we arrive, the Halloween spirit was in the air. The train was done up with scarecrows and pumpkins and cobwebs. It was awesome. We dressed up the kids in their Halloween costumes. It was so cute. We board the train. The conductor gives a silly and corny introduction. Something about this train has been haunted for hundreds of years and blah blah blah. It was cheesy, but the kids enjoyed it. The train honks its horn and it starts rolling. We were in the very front. We paid extra money so that we could have the best seats. The train was more of a sightseeing experience, so it wasn't going very fast, but definitely fast enough to where you'd get hurt if you jumped out for whatever reason. It was awesome because they had people dressed like zombies and vampires standing around the tracks. As you went by, they tried scaring you by pretending to reach for the train. It was so fun, until about 30 minutes in. We were all hanging over the side of the train, watching people go by, and then we saw a woman. She wasn't dressed up like the other people on the ground were. She wasn't trying to reach for the train either. She just stood there with her head down. As the train approached her, I could hear the conductor on the radio saying there was someone by the tracks. I looked at my wife in confusion. I looked back out of the train and back at the woman. The woman lay down on the tracks right before the train got there. I screamed to the conductor to stop the train. He heard me and pulled the emergency brakes, but the train was too close and it rolled over the woman. Her body was split into two at her torso. Blood sprayed out over the side of the train. Everyone in the train was screaming. The kids thankfully didn't realize what happened though. The train came to a stop and the adult and conductor jumped off the train and ran back to where the lady was. But when we ran back to her, there was no body. No one could explain how this was possible. Maybe the train really was haunted. 